Uh, in this episode, we are going to talk about few, very, few, very important preventive measures. I am 100% sure you have seen this already 300 times. There has been a lot of panic about a proper way of preventing this, but there is always some very other ways of doing this. This is um, presented at that time where the panic has already begun and um, you are totally out of, you know, like Lysol and everything. And you and the thing is that our mis misperception is that putting Lysol in our hands and then rubbing it and then washing it, this is not the way you're going to use Lysol. You're going to squeeze Lysol, you're going to actually apply the Lysol all around your hands and uh, at the back of your hands from the fingers to the palms and you have to let it dry only then you will get the maximum protection now soap and water is all you need for this prevention you do not need anything extra or anything you know like just don't worry if you do not have Lysol or anything so as you will see right now I've tried to demonstrate it to you Make sure you're holding or squeezing the, you know, like you're at home. If you have a liquid soap, liquid soap is better because you can squeeze with the help of your elbow. You squeeze it out of your elbow, apply it on your hand. And this is a thorough process. So do not rush this process. 10 second hand wash doesn't do anything. At least you do five cycles of rotations that I've shown you. Um, a minute to two minutes kind of a hand wash is something very, very effective. Also, make sure you are cleaning your, um, you know, fingers the way I've shown you right now. And you're also rubbing your fingers properly. Back side of the palm, not the front side, the back side of the palm. The creases between your fingers and your nails, if you have nails. And, you know, the tips of your fingers, very important you clean them. Now, after you have done this cleaning process, all you have to do is that, again, to turn off the water supply, if you have a handle kind of a water supply, with the help of your elbow, you're going to press it down and make sure your hands, after washed, they come up like this. In that way, the water, whatever excessive water is flowing down. And then what you can do is that a lot of people do is that they take towel and they rub from the bottom. But nope, you have to go from top to bottom. That's how you're going to rub your, um, you know, like stuff for NIOSH and N95 versus regular 3M appropriate use of a mask so um, this is an airborne kind of a virus which will spread uh, via the air again if you watch not if you have not watched the first episode go ahead and watch the first episode uh, where I have talked about um, you know the transmission efficiency of the virus uh, in, an, in an environment now a lot of us according to WHO guidelines were using surgical mask and hence you will you will see that um, there is right now a lot of outbreaks that's happening amongst the healthcare workers. Now, the thing is that the way of recommendation where I think was not proper, but it might be again arguable also, was that surgical masks never prevent you from the disease to, uh, from, uh, you know, like uh, from the environment to the person. It actually prevents the person from spreading the disease to the outer environment. Now, in the beginning, if you have watched the news very, very carefully, and this was bugging me for a long time, that how the world is not seeing this, that uh, on a disease like this, when we were having SARS 2012, we were wearing N95 respirators. N95 respirators are the mask that you need to wear if you want this virus, if you want yourself to prevent from this virus. Surgical masks don't do anything apart from a person who is a patient from spreading the virus. Now, uh, scenario two, if um, I'm talk telling back according to my experience, uh, when we were combating SARS back in 2012 um, and uh, in our hospitals as a primary care physician or an ER physician, um, we were running shortage of masks and we were not having N95s at all. So uh, what we used to do is that we used to double mask it, but in a different way. So we used to apply a normal surgical mask and we used to turn around the second surgical mask and apply that. And uh, to be very frank, that was effective for us and uh, none of us got infected at that time, even though we had high volume of patients that were coming in uh, for, you know, like as um, 
in the ER those who had symptoms of SARS coronavirus 1. Now SARS coronavirus 2 um, also one more important stuff let's apply some logic logically um, you know like a virus will go through your nostrils or your you know like uh, mouth and it will end up in your lungs and everything but uh, there is one route that we did not uh, you know consider about is wearing full face full face respirators full face respirator masks actually prevent your eyes from having uh, getting in touch with the virus because your virus can reach your eyes from the eyes it will get displaced to the conjunctiva conjunctiva from the conjunctiva it will go to the sclera and from sclera you have got blood vessel innervation we did not forget we did not consider that route why am i telling you this because um, if we, if anybody wants to combat this virus seriously and there's so much of misinformation right now that uh, every day when i see this it actually bugs me a lot that if you want to take prevention of this particular outbreak in a in a region where it is in total quarantine that's how you're supposed to walk now that's for healthcare professionals now as uh, non-healthcare professionals as regular people when we are walking down in the in the streets uh, what are we going to do if we do not have full face mask and full face face respirator masks are very very expensive so there is another way the another way is uh, you know welders glass sometimes 3m sells those cheap glasses uh, which are used in labs you can buy those glasses for very cheap right now they have um, a full full-on mask that's sealed and they have a small vents so that you know there's a little bit of ventilation going on there's not a lot of fogging uh, but you have to make sure that every time you come back home you take off those goggles and you are cleaning them with Lysol so it takes a lot of uh, you know care when it comes to reusability of all those factors um, uh, so I think you know like that and then there is another factor that we need to uh, talk about uh, the factor is that whenever you see in news media and everything you are watching that uh, you know everybody was wearing a, you know like a plastic gown which was reusable you open it and you throw it and you wear next day the other one if there is a level of quarantine in your area or anything, I think that's how a normal person who is not infected is going to walk. Um, you necessarily do not need to buy something like that. All you can do is um, buy ponchos, which are going to cover your, you know, till arm level. And then when you come back, make sure you are not entering your room. Make sure you're taking off that apparel, putting it in a plastic bag, seal it throw it and then you enter uh, your apartment i think these were all the stuff that we were doing in sars covid one you know like coronavirus uh, one you know like and i do not know why these steps are not getting repeated again and again and maybe there's a panic some sort of because now it's a pandemic at that time it was just an epidemic um, but these are the factors that we seriously seriously need to consider about uh, another very big misinformation is that um, I'm hearing in some some sort of media that having garlic is going to prevent no like why mm, yep and that was all uh, from this channel techadu yes uh, we do cover tech and stuff like that but uh, this is also a health oriented channel um, not every day we are going to talk about you know like a different sort of viruses or anything this is just to know my subscribers whatever knowledge i have help everybody who is uh, right now in that sort of situation, what all the, uh, what all stuff they can do. So stay tuned, next episode. Uh, till then, uh, stay safe. Um, I would not say necessarily to stay indoors until and unless you are quarantined in, in a quarantine zone or anything, you know, like, uh, and uh, if you like this presentation, give a thumbs up and uh, share this with your family and friends.